Hello, this is Alan Wheeler on my YouTube channel where I usually talk about spirituality and tarot. Today I'm using the Fallen Angel Oracle cards and inspired by uh, a recent video by uh, Astral Anna from Amsterdam where she talked about um, doing pick a card readings in Dutch there, I thought I would try it uh, for my first time. And so the title will be something like Pick a Card for a Dark Energy Boost. Um, and I'll describe that in just a minute. But for the actual draw here, I've drawn three cards. And I'm going to let you pick one, but think of a situation a question or a dilemma that's going on in your life right now um, where you could use some support um, of some kind, whether guidance or strength or whatever. And uh, we'll let the card speak to that situation um, that you have in mind. So be thinking about that. Uh, let me give a little warning or disclaimer. Um, about these cards. And I talked about it in a previous video, but um, some people will see these uh, cards, the fallen angels, as aspects of self, the darker aspects of self. Some will see them as energies in the collective unconscious. Um, some may even see them as real entities. Um, so whatever the case, they're dark energies that need to be integrated. And so it's something like a shadow reading, uh, really no different to me than a shadow uh, work in tarot. Now, um, in this case, they don't need to be looked at as the personified evil of Abrahamic religion. So if, um, you know, uh, like in the horror movies or the super villains in the superhero movies, you don't necessarily um, want to be dealing with that kind of thing. Now, the uh, Golden Dawn, uh, where uh, Waite and uh, Crowley you know, developers of the biggest develop developers of tarot uh, came from the Golden Dawn, and they were sometimes called uh, Sol uh, Solomon <laughs> Solomonic, uh, having to do with King Solomon, because Solomon was said to have controlled uh, seventy-two. Um, demons, basically, um, in building the first temple. And they may have uh, had seen that this as part of the alchemical workings in the Golden Dawn. Anyway, they were called, uh, I'm massacring this word, but Solomonic um, order. So we're not necessarily looking at, at it like that. Um, I will say this. Um, it's a lot of it's a matter of perception and, and faith. And so the first night when uh, these cards arrived and I first looked at them, and I think I pulled three to um, kind of show me the bonding process with that deck. And that night I had some intense, disturbing... Uh, dreams. And in the morning, uh, I wasn't really shaken up, but it gave me pause. And so in the morning, I uh, poured salt into a little dish um, and set it on the deck on my altar while I gathered my thoughts. And I cleansed the deck with incense and candle and I um, applied some anointing oil 
and cast a little circle and so forth. Um, but I had just plunged straight in uh, to the deck and later thinking back, um, it was a matter of perception because in working with the Morrigan, who's a, a dark deity, uh, I expected some shadow work. And when I had bad dreams at that time, I woke up and I was thankful. I just said, oh, thank you, um, because it seemed to be uh, working the process. So in this case, I was fearful. And that the negative emotions will just feed um, whereas faith will work the reverse, the kind of positive energy uh, likewise. So my disclaimer or warning is just, as with anything, use discernment and intention. And uh, you could look at that as faith, if you come from a Catholic background or, or something, and um, apply the rituals you would in th that religion. Um, I think um, from, from where I'm sitting that whatever, um, I wrote this down, uh, whatever represents protection for you is going to be the thing that most likely works. So if you're from a more psychological perspective, it's going to be keeping the room clean and discipline and disciplining the mind and looking things, looking at things from the right framework. Um, if you're from a tradition of folklore of some kind, it's going to be casting the circle in a certain way. But um, pers personally, I think it's less, you know, what brand of salt you use or what order you cast the circle in than the setting of that intention acting in faith, um, and working up that good energy. So uh, that's my two cents on that. So let's do the, <laughs> with that long <laughs> introduction, uh, let's actually do the pick a card. So here are the three cards uh, that I drew. And again, get your situation or question. Um, not a yes, no question, um, that won't work well, but um, just some dilemma or something you're facing where you could use an energy um, integration or some kind of wisdom. And we'll see what you can be looking for to come in as support for you to work through, um, whether in a uh, shadowy way or a more direct uh, way as the case may be. So it will depend on what you pick and how you apply it. So this is card one, card two, or card three. So I'll go ahead and snap my fingers and by that time have set your intention, pick a card one, two, or three. Okay, stick with the card that you picked, and we will look at these one by one. If you picked card number one, we're going to look at Furcus. Furcus. And this is card 39. Um, but I looked online and supposedly he's 50 in the list of the Solomon 70, 72. And he's a knight, but he appears as a wizened old man on horseback with a long beard, scraggly hair, and an almost harsh look at first appearance, but actually he's very kindly and helpful. And uh, 
one source said he, he's riding on a pale horse. The key words here are take advice. So you may be looking, whether from intuition or drawing some cards or uh, someone who comes into your life, you may be looking for some kind of wisdom or advice to aid you in the situation or dilemma you're thinking of. So uh, he carries a sharp lance with him. So it may be a very clear cut. There may be real clarity offered uh, for you at this time. Um, he brings wisdom. He's very philosophical. Uh, he's also known for finding lost things and finding treasures. So the, this insight that comes to you or this wisdom may uncover something valuable. So this is Fergus, if you picked card number one. For those who picked card number two, G-A-A-P, GAP, I'm guessing. And uh, in some sources I saw it was actually T-A-A-P. And this is card number 36. And according to one online source, it's number 32 of the 72 from Solomon's list. And this is a very powerful card. The key words are change and development. So if you're seeing this card, um, the to me this tombstone almost looks like the Wheel of Fortune here. So change or development uh, may be expected. But the, uh, I said this is a very powerful card. This is one of the four rulers of the 72. Uh, he can appear as a human with bat wings who's preceded by four powerful um, kings. Uh, just uh, as the, the image sometimes appears. Um, and there's a uh, uh, He's known to teach liberal sciences, like theoretical uh, things, mathematics, and philosophy, um, but can also bring gr a great emotion to relationships, so it could be um, volatile. There could be powerful love um, or powerful hate. Um, th those are sometimes related, right? So strong feelings. Um, can come in and so there could be change in development developing from strong relational emotional feelings. Now this character can um, <clears throat> bring uh, effects to those who oppose you. So um, it can bring confusion and um, can uh, let me get the guidebook out here because because it's slipping my mind here just a bit. Um, he can steal the strength of enemies and afflict them with lethargy, um, or just render them senseless. So this is a very um, it can bring about the change you want. So take be ready to take action on any opportunities to bring about your desired um, results. If you picked card number three, it is Marbus. And not only is it the card three, but it's the number three in this set of cards. He's actually numbered five in Solomon's list, but it's card three in this deck. And this character appears uh, as a lion. He's a, a, a president, so he's a high level um, among the uh, 
entities or energies, um, but he appears initially as a lion, sometimes with a flaming mane, but uh, will take human shape if uh, you persist in um, envisioning or interacting. He answers, um, he gives answers of things that are hidden, revealing secrets, uh, can also bring hidden diseases or cure hidden causes of diseases. So this is something that works deep at the roots of a situation. Uh, this character has wisdom as well, um, can bring wisdom, and also knowledge of um, the source said mechanical arts, but I'm taking that to mean technology. So wisdom in the use of technology uh, may be of some support in the situation or the dilemma that you thought of. And so this is Marbus, the lion. Okay. Um, I'll let you reflect on that. Hopefully that uh, provides some support or assistance to you. I'm um, helping you to think through a situation, a dilemma, or question that you had. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope you find connection with people in your life, with online community, and on your spiritual path, whatever that might be. Take care.